So my notes for each one of these albums, literally one sentence long. It's exactly the same as the last <laughs> album. I know. Rinse and repeat. These guys are really good at making one album. They're good. Like, they sound good. I just was bored as fuck. Production's good. Yeah, it's well, a good sound production's quality. Production's good. Musicians are all good. Yep. You know? They know what they're doing. They're just, ah, uh, come on. This was the same as the last six albums. They go, like, oh, wait, did the drum solo out on? Did I hear, is that elite? No, well, why never did we feel that way about Slayer? Because they, they're not every song is the exact same same thing when it comes to that. It's not the same speed. It's not the same variance every song. Uh, Seasons of the Abyss. Hello. That's not yeah. the same as Rain South and Hell. Of Heaven. Yeah, they're all different and they're all right. Heavy as shit. Did you say Rain and Hell? No. <laughs> Maybe did. Said, I don't know. Yeah. It's like, I, don't know. Long... I was talking about Slayer and then <laughs> Hell just came <laughs> yeah, up. It's just gonna... synonymous. Shit. It's been a long week. It's going to be really hot tomorrow night. Well, I got air conditioning now, so whatever. I'm done. I'm fine now. Oh, no. I mean, like... We're going to be in a room with, like, a bunch of dudes that look like me. Like, 400 of them. Well, we are. Um, the Dan Terryites? Yes. I'm going to walk in there and be like, oh, my God, it's him. The guy that got us all into Zayo. I, I have a feeling that, like, in some sense, like, if everybody shows up at a Zayo show, they've talked to me at some point. Probably. Or they've left a comment on your page. Hey, Dan, uh, can I get you anything else with your meal? Yeah, have you listened to Zayo? Oh, no, I just thought, you like, maybe you wanted a, a refill on your Coke or something. No, 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 no. Zayo and why, beer. Bring why do beer. I why do I picture you like a Jehovah Witness? Here, do you have five minutes to talk about Zayo? We have five <laughs> minutes to talk about our Lord and Savior Zayo. What could Zayo do for you? Like, how did you get permission to do with Denny's in the first place? Like, do you know somebody? They're just like, yeah, fuck right, it, we but, got nothing. But, but let's say somebody calls you and it's like, dude, we got a gig at Denny's. We got fifty. Do people you ask questions or do you just drive to Denny's? You know what I mean? Like. You just show up with your you band show equipment? show up and start playing, you know. Hey, here's the deal. It's 3.30 in the morning. You can have us 50 people give you money, or you can just uh, just not have anything to do. That's that's what I'm expecting to hear the next time I see you. Oh, my God. We destroyed a Denny's. This, like, 17-year-old kid gets up on the microphone and goes, What the fuck is up, Denny's? <laughs> like, that's it. I quit. I'm going home. How do they get permission to... They're to, in a Denny's. How... how like, well, these guys are fucking throwing down, too. Is that yeah. a server in the background just kind of chilling? Oh, she's taking pictures. Okay, she's with the band. Okay. You see him run up to the mic and go, What the fuck is up, Denny's? <laughs> I, like, I like this chick. Oh, she's videotaping. He's okay, straight okay, up, okay, okay, okay. He's I get it straight now. up Dan Terry Mosh in there. Nobody would have ever thought from this video that they would have gone on to sell $10 million. It just gets me pumped every time. So much beef. So much beef. You're listening to Discography Discussion, episode 129, The Black Dahlia Murder. Hosted by Dan Terry. What the fuck is up, Denny's? Josh Baldridge. Pancakes. And Joseph Wren. It was nighttime, and that was the responsible decision. <laughs> it's like, but he's drunk, but he's not allowed to drive. How did you guys end up in this situation? <laughs> Presented by DiscussMetal.com. And if you think the Black Dahlia murder is a really shitty B-movie, then you are ready for this episode of Discography Discussion. I am Joe, that is Dan, that is Josh. Welcome to the Black Dahlia murder episode. I just want to apologize right now. Ahead of time, yeah. <clears throat> we are going to ruffle some feathers for fucking sure. <laughs> well, Josh will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to play the nice guy here. I am going to ruffle feathers and come at me, bitches. Everybody's just going to petition to have Josh removed from the show. It's, Bring it. Yeah. Get your pens and paper ready, Matt and Cameron Lee McKinnon. You guys asked for it. We're talking about the Black Dahlia murder. You guys asked for it. I don't know what I did to deserve this. Did we get punished for this? What do we do? I'll say this as early as I can. I do not think that the Black Dahlia murder is a bad band. No, that's not the issue. They are a very technical sound band. They sound good. They can play good. They have talent. When I'm listening to an album, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it while I'm listening to it. Yes. Turn it off. And then you're like, what did I just listen to? Yes. You listen to some straight metalcore with screaming. Oh, so Joe's going to take that position, the most offensive position about the Black Dahlia murder, by calling them metalcore. Someone's playing the fence. Well, it's been debated among fans for years as to whether they are a melodic death metal band or a metalcore band. Metalcore. And I'm going to be that guy and just say, hey, you know what? It's somewhere in between. Can't they just suck? <laughs> No, they don't suck. Oh, my God. No, I'm just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, before we start talking about what flavor the cream filling is, I want to take this time to say thank you to everyone for listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. If you are not a subscriber, then you can find everything discography discussion at discussmetal.com. We are on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher. So if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, you have no excuse. Ask it to play the latest episode of the Discography Discussion podcast, and it will. 
We're also on Facebook and on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps us out. It lets us know you're listening. And now Dan is going to tell us all about five-star reviews. We love five-star reviews here on Discography Discussion. And the reason we love them is because they make me feel good. And I don't always feel good, so I need more reviews. More seriously, you guys know why we need reviews, recommendations, and all that good stuff. If we listen to this podcast all the time and you haven't reviewed it, review it. We would love to have a review to read on the show. Tell us what you think of Dan. Joe, don't critique me. We got a comment on episode one, Metallica. Holy shit. Mr. Roboto66 on YouTube says, Almost all music before 1996 was done on tape machines. That's why they sounded so lovely and warm and lush and smooth. Nowadays, people are trying to chase after that sound with plugins, but honestly, nothing beats the real thing. I definitely agree. Yeah, I, uh, as a, a metal traditionalist, for sure. That Get is, off my uh, lawn. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's you know, it is what it is. If you're going to record analog, listening analog is ideal. That, to me, is where vinyl shines best. What I don't understand is recording digitally and then pressing to vinyl and saying it sounds better because now I have a vinyl preamp. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your two cents, Joe. The best sounding records are the ones that are recorded digitally and played digitally. I'm not saying it's better than analog. Sure. (laughs) You said anal. No, you just, you said a thing and then you said that you weren't saying the thing that you said. So now you're saying that thing about the thing that you said you said you wouldn't say about. Just follow the thing. I don't know what either one of you just said. (laughs) But to his point, yes, that is correct. I definitely love this sound to that pre-era. We got a tweet from Nick Kill. Oh, shit. A merciful fate discography discussion would rule. You bet your sweet ass it would. Absolutely. Except two for out of all the, those two out of three where here. King Diamond yeah, is singing. That's okay. Two out of three of us would appreciate this discography. <laughs> I don't know, and I'm not going to point fingers at who the third member, Dan, <clears throat> would be, but Joe and I would love to do that. Not so the much boss makeup. okays of it. So much makeup. Yeah, but he's metal as shit. Didn't they say it on Beavis and Butthead one time that they're they're like, how, why is he wearing makeup? It's almost like they said, you know, they all were drunk one night and were like, we should totally wear makeup to band practice. And King Diamond's the only one that did it. Yeah, that's that's probably who is just stuck. <laughs> like, oh, this is my shtick now. I would love to do Merciful Fate, hands down. So there's my vote. So Dan, tell me about the Black Dahlia murder. I thought that you would never ask, Joe. The Black Dahlia murder is an American. Melodic death metal band. Yeah, that's what I'm calling them. No. From Waterford, Michigan. It's weird because bands like this typically don't come from the U.S. of A. They're usually over in Sweden or Finland or name, somewhere there name by some Jeff's other. Place. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere by Jeff's house. These guys are homegrown. They're American, and they sound nothing like Pantera. No. So I should love them, right? No. By design, <laughs> yes. This should be right up your alley. It really is, in a in a way. They bust onto the scene in 2003 with a record called Unhallowed. Nice, evil-sounding name. Sweet title. So evil. What do they play? They play melodic death metal, and it's 2003, so it's not really a new thing. However, they're a little bit heavier than your standard death metal band. And they're technical, and they sound good. They're super technical. They're very talented musicians, at least the ones that were in this album. And there's a lot of melody there. And so if you look at something like In Flames or Dark Tranquility or Arch Enemy or name another Gothenburg band we've talked about, uh, Avatar, you know, <laughs> just, I mean, the list goes on and on. We, we've almost covered that whole scene at the gates. God, I could do this all night. So what is it about the Black Dahlia murder that makes them unique? Were they the only American death metal band in 2003 that was doing this sound? Not really. No, but they sound better than the ones who do. They have excellent production quality. The drumming, this is true. The drumming's fast. The guitar work is technical. It's melodic. It's kind of emotive in a couple of places. No clean vocals, which I love. I like that it's very go for the throat. Vocals go transition between high-pitched shrieking and deeper guttural death growls like you'd get from something like Cannibal Corpse. And I think that's really what sets them apart and makes them a little bit more American sounding is the vocals and the drumming. I think guitar wise, they're they're very much in line with bands like in, Old In Flames or Old Dark Tranquility or At the Gates. However, I I think that vocally, them having that deeper death grunt is a little unique for their sound. A lot of these bands just pick one, but like Joe was saying earlier, that also kind of puts them in metalcore territory because there's a lot of metalcore bands that do the same thing especially in 2003. I mean, what's more metalcore than mixing melodic death metal with 
hardcore vocals, hardcore screams, and you know a little bit more of it like the American the American brutality. The answer is what sets this apart from metalcore. I think at least on this album is that it's still more firmly rooted in death metal. There's a lot of soloing and stuff. They don't have gimmicky breakdowns like a lot of metalcore bands would have. They would maybe share a similar style. And I think one of the biggest things is that the Black Dahlia Murder plays, they're firmly rooted in metal. If you compare this to something like Unearth or Azalea Dying or Kill Switch Engage, this is far more complicated than that. Yes. And far more technical. So why are those bands more enjoyable to listen to? It's because they write memorable songs. And that's one thing that the Black Dahlia Murder doesn't do. They don't write songs. They don't They don't have traditional compositions. It's, let's play this riff, play this riff, play this riff. Okay, now we're going to switch over to this other one. We're going to switch over to this other one. Maybe throw a bridge in there, throw a solo in there. And then bam, 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 blast, 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 and we're done. It's thrash metal from the 80s. Play riff, play other riff, play solo, play riff again. And done. It's, yeah, it's definitely formulaic. And it's, they follow that same pattern and formula throughout their history. Well, I had to admit, I was blown away by Unhallowed. I like this album. I was excited this being a band I'd never... I know of them, but I had never listened to them before. I liked this album. I, I was excited to see what else they had from this album moving forward, and then... Well, yeah, so I mean... Uh, yeah, I was blown away by by how immediately good they were. Because a lot of bands, you start with the first album, and you're like, all right, I mean, this is okay. Yeah, that's like an introductory to the band. They progressively get better. But, I mean, these guys sound top of the line immediately. And I think that's great. They were in a good studio. They, they laid down all the ideas that they had. They presented their version of heavy metal to the world. And it, it sounds really good. The like I can't praise the production enough. I think it sounds great. This reminds me of the kind of an album you would have as like your third or fourth album when you've kind of figured shit out. You kind of know the process. You have a you know a, a little bit more money to do your production value. This is this is what this album reminds me of. Somewhere where that's kind of the uh, we've made our name, we've got our money. We know what we're doing. You know, we're technical now. We're not just throwing shit together. But they are definitely throwing shit together. Yes. Yes. And that's the beauty of that. That just that just underscores just how talented these guys really are as musicians and writers. Was this the generation of metal that the guitarist and the drummer just showed up and said, this is the song, guys, and nobody had any other input? I don't know. I think the vocals are orchestrated in such a way that they had to have been part of the songwriting process. You would think. Either that or they're just really good at adapting. I would think they have to be involved. That's too hard to just show up and go, all right, this is what you're going to do. Well, I take it back. This was 2003 where everybody was trying to be heavier and more extreme by playing faster, even though there was no technical reason to do that. I think they just did it because they wanted to, and it, it sounds fine. I, I don't really have an issue with this record by itself. No. I, I mean, I can pop it in. I can listen to this. I can enjoy it. I saved this album. But my... there's there's nothing memorable about it. Like, I can't tell you what my favorite song is because all the songs run together. And that's going to become a huge problem with a band that has this many albums. Unfortunately so. Not to take away from their talent or anything, but... 2005. My asthma. Well, you, you can get an inhaler for that, Joe. That's over the counter as well. We, we can help you out with that. You know, don't go out on orange quality air days. You'll be okay. Oh, you mean the album? <laughs> oh, gotcha. Oh, shit. Okay, sorry. I always wait for you to clear your throat. I'm, sorry, I thought he was having an asthma attack. Okay. Okay, so yeah, the album, I, I, I didn't call it my asthma. I called it miasma. Ah, so did I. That's why I thought it was enunciated. Because I thought it was supposed to be cool, but these guys are from fucking Michigan, so. Shocker. Right. They probably don't They probably don't have a weird accent on it. I kind of like this album, too. This one actually has better sound quality than the first one, and I was surprised by that because of how fucking good the first one sounds, but this album is a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more... Complexity to the riffs. Yeah, it's a little... The song conduction. It's a little bit more gallopy. Is that is that Ooh, a good yeah. word to describe like, yeah. it, metal? Like, it gallopy? As the resident Metallica fan, it's very Four Horsemen-y kind of, yeah, galloping metal sound from the 80s. Hey, Josh, I'm here too. S sorry, I have a degree in that to, to you. <laughs> I went to school for that. His, credit, his credits transfer to other universities. Dr. Metallica fan. Yeah, it's Dr. Metallica fan. Yeah, I I, this, it, I'm having a horrible case of, case of my asthma. <laughs> uh, what do I do here? You, uh, you, re you uh, resident metal fans out there will understand what we're saying by the galloping part. It's a little bit slower. They take more time on the songs. I but like then, this album more than I do the first one. But whenever they speed up, 
they kind of just go back to the first album. Yeah. The Black Dahlia murder as a whole doesn't really go anywhere. They Correct. write technically sound songs, but I'm not hearing anything new that I didn't hear on the first record. And that's going to be a theme going forward, unfortunately. If that's what you want, then these guys are awesome for you. Absolutely. Again, they don't suck. Like, any of you guys who are fans of this band out there, don't think that we're shitting on them or this is a knock on them. It's just, uh, I look for diversity a little bit or maybe, uh, maybe a little style change from here or there. You know, try something. But I guess if it's a formula that works for you, if you have your hardcore fans and that's what they want, you know, who the fuck am I to, to, you know, to say anything about your songwriting or your band? You're there, I'm not, so. We've talked about it before. An unpleasable metal fan would complain about the band being too formulaic. How you doing? Or not formulaic enough. Yeah, yeah. I, it's kind of the, the damned if you do, damned if you don't when it comes to this. Well, I think whenever you play this style, I think these guys legitimately just wanted to play metal the best that they could. And they do that. But I would question, I hate to always say this about bands, but I question what the audience is for this. Are you trying to ring in the hardcore metalcore kids with your stuff? Because you could do that, maybe. Except there's no breakdowns and, and no weird haircuts or anything like that. There's no clean vocals. There's no choruses. So that would lead me to believe that they are trying to appeal to the metal fan. Like the guy that listens to Cannibal Corpse and shit stuff like Deicide or maybe even the European stuff. They're trying to impress Jeff. Jeff, how do you feel about that? You are listening to Deep Grooves. It's fucking brutal, dude. Presented by DiscussMetal.com. I just kind of touched my man nip. I think that they can't really appeal to that guy either, though, because he's listening to stuff that is more technical than this, and he's listening to stuff that is a little bit more rooted in traditional metal, whereas these guys have enough modern influence to where I think the old school metal fan's not going to dig it. The brutal death metal fan's not going to dig it. So it's almost one of those, like, uh, like a gateway version of death metal, I think, for, for people that are unfamiliar with the style. I think in that regard, Black Dahlia Murder is a good band to start with if you're just getting into extreme metal. Now they're in that Bermuda Triangle. They're not really sure who the fuck they are, who their, who their core is. In 2005, if you were a fan of Thrash, what was your new modern option? Godsmack. It was basically just Lamb of God, right? Yeah, again, or I Mastodon, at the maybe time, something like that. At the time, we Children thought that voting. was all there was. Shadows Fall. Not everybody listened to Shadows Fall, we all, we all know Sodom was still putting records out. Oh, yeah, they were. The creator. Creator. With a K, people. The, With a K. What, that's what I'm saying, though. These these people are... These bands exist, and people that listen to shit like Sodom and Creator and you know even some of the death metal bands, they're not going to check out the Black Dahlia Murder because I think... They're still a little bit too modern, still a little bit too metalcore for, for it's the gonna turn them off. A, it's going to turn them off a little bit. It is kind of up my alley, though. I just I can't get behind the songs. And whenever you get to 2007, you kind of have the same issue. Nocturnal. Rinse, repeat, do it again. It's unhallowed again. Yeah, I mean, again, not that it's that's bad, just... It we, couldn't have a more generic cover for this band. I know, right? <laughs> I will. I will give them shit for this. It's like, come on, guys, come on. Yeah, just like a, you know, a, 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 what is it like a church at night? Yeah, you know, like, like, come on, who dropped the ball? Maybe, the production maybe, it's a, team? maybe it's a mausoleum. What, whatever. But still, like, no, it's it's definitely like a citadel with it's like It's just evil. cheesy looking. You know what? I, okay, no, I'm gonna take a stab at this. I think I know what it is. It is the tower of Kirith Ungol from the Lord of the Rings. It's oh. got the two. It's got the two watchers in front of it. You remember how Sam and Frodo had to pull yeah, out like yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. like a magic bottle of water to make it go away? I don't I don't know. It's weird. But I think but that's, a, I, I could well that see that's a leap. So that took us this long to try and put that together. Yeah, just looking at it now, I was like, wait, it's got the two watchers and the you know, the average fan isn't gonna fucking care. They're we were weird. we were trading memes on our private chat earlier when we were sharing Lord of the Rings stuff. I think that's what that's it's what top of mind me. for Dan now. One hundred percent. It's not this isn't a bad album, but again, like you said, it's it's the, we, we, they've done this before. There's nothing new here. It's the same thing as the first album. Sounds great. I still think the production's probably right as it is from the last album. It, eh, there's just not a whole lot to critique here. They're in the formula. Every two years, they come back and they give the fans what the fans yeah, expect. Yeah, I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot to critique on this. But can we criticize them for that? Because we've criticized tons of bands for every two years putting out what they expect. But then on the flip side... As soon as they change, we're like, fuck you and your reload. Ladies and gentlemen, unpleasable metal fan. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just saying, like, 
I can't really, with a good conscience, shit on this band for not being particularly innovative. And there's also the fact that the music is good. Each record, take it on its own as its own product, is perfectly fine. Yes. It does everything that it does everything that you'd want a death metal band to do. You got fast drumming, technical guitar work, uh, really, you know, sometimes different time signatures. Yeah. Uh, diverse great, vocals. Great, great solos, diverse vocals that don't just sound monotone. But it is so hard to pay attention to this band. And I don't think it's their fault. I think it's my fault. Um, I'm not going to... Like yeah, like he's, I'm not gonna criticize them for being the same throughout because, as again, shocker, when I go back to Metallica, they had shit that they tried that I didn't necessarily like a lot, but there were aspects of the changes that I liked. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I I can't blame a band like this. Like, what kind of a following do you think this band has? Do you think if they deviated from the previous three albums and did something not even completely different, just something that was different sounding? Do they have a hardcore enough following to where they wouldn't fall off the face of the earth, or or do they are they the kind of band that you have to do this kind of thing, or else they just don't have a fucking following? I think their fan base expects them to do exactly the same thing they did on the last album because they have established a reputation. They are going to make more of the music that you want. It's a niche market because it doesn't change. They're saying to the fans, we're not going to innovate or do anything extravagant. We're not going to bust out the sitar on this one and do a 20-minute expose. It's just going to be more metal, guys. We're not challenging our listener to change their mindset of what they think is acceptable. You want metal? You want this style of metal? We're going to give it to you. I also think there's the angle that maybe this is a band created by metal elitists. Oh, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, but sure, that would make sense. The I band mean, members think about themselves it. have such a high expectation of what their band is supposed, supposed to be. Supposed to sound like. And they don't they don't make any of the mistakes that a lot of bands do because I can say it I can say it flat out. I've said it a few times now. The Black Dahlia murder has never sucked. No. And that is mostly because they always put out a consistent product. But as a music critic, I feel the need to say something about the fact that they don't really change. No. Yeah, the songs are different. It's a constructive criticism kind of thing. Like, sure, the songs are different, but I can't get into the individual songs. I feel like they all run together because it, it all sounds the same. And again, I think that's just the downside of us listening to it in such a quick I was going to say, I think, I think this is the type of band to where you can pick out an album or two and listen to it and go, okay, cool, I enjoyed that. But you can't, like, pop it in and go for a six-hour car ride, you know, and listen to the whole fucking discography. Like, you just, to me, you for me, you can't. I like to pick an album or two from this, move about my day, and listen to something else. I couldn't do, I can't digest this entire discography. So you would reach for the band if you were building your trip. Yes, they would definitely be in my mix because I, like I said they're good. Master they're of Puppets, not, yeah. Ride the Lightning. It's a good sure, change I'll throw up. on Defloate. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a good change up. I just can't. I couldn't do the entire you know like three four of them back to back. There'd have to be some break some other, you know, something in the rotation there. But yeah, I would definitely add them in my rotation. I already add the first album to it. Like, it's a good band. They're a good band, just unfortunately, like we've said before, they have fans that they're catering to, and I think they just stick to that, do what they know. I think that if you are in 2007 and you're like, yeah, Nocturnal, it's great, and then you listen to that record for two years, then you buy Deflorate in 2009, you're like, oh yeah, the boys are fucking back. It's like a Metallica fan's wet dream. Like they're just gonna play De and Justice for All forever. Yes, and Justice for All, the fourth album in a row. Let's let's be honest. On theory, that sounds fucking great. Still no bass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason. Um, yeah, in theory, that sounds fucking great, and I would get <laughs> just thinking about it. But in reality, like, if I had to be honest with myself, no, it would be fucking boring to listen to Injustice for All three fucking times in a row or four times in a row. And God, I love you, James Heffield, and happy birthday, but no, no, I, I couldn't do it. It's so... I think even I don't I don't even know that even the hardcore fans from the early '80s with a band like that would I don't think that they'd even stick around long enough for four albums in the row that are identical. Well, these guys are obviously still doing well. Oh, by by all means, they just played uh, the louder or their I I don't know if that festival's happened or not yet, but the louder than life festival, which was a huge. It either just happened a week ago or it's it's sometime within this last few week window. Yeah, you know, and that that and they played alongside of like some really big bands. 
I think one of the biggest issues is that I can't just listen to the same thing over and over again. And I know somebody right now is thinking, well, what the fuck, Dan? You did Napalm Death. All that sounds the same. I thought you liked Zayo, Dan. Zayo, does, no, the Zayo That's records the don't same. sound the same every album. You think Parade of Chaos sounds anything like where Blood and Fire Bring Rest? I think the fan of Black Dahlia Murder would challenge the fact that you're listening to the same band over and over. They are doing the same thing. The only exception is that every album is the same over and over. Well, and to get to get into Deflorate or Deflowerate or however the fuck you pronounce it, it's again, it's the same band doing the same thing again. And there's just almost too many albums of this. I, I'm, I'm to a point where I'm like, guys, it's good. I love it. But what else you got? And maybe I'm asking too much because, you know, it, it probably takes a lot of effort to compose and perform these songs. You have to have you have to be able to play at a level that I think a lot of people can't play at. Drumming notwithstanding, I think the drumming could be a little bit more complicated than it is. At this point, the Black Dahlia murder is just building more options for that one hour show. We're going to play the festival and it just be loud and intense beginning to end. It doesn't really matter what songs we play. You're going to get the same emotional reaction to this band live or otherwise. I think the problem is, is you could play one or two songs from each album in a live set and tell everybody that it was a new album and they'd probably believe it. They won't care. They'll just fucking it'll eat it up. I mean, Deflowerate, I don't know what else to say about it. It sounds like Nocturnal and Unhallowed. And Next. 2011, Ritual. Hey, that's my line, motherfucker. Oh, sorry, bitch. <laughs> Love you, Joe. Ritual's the same thing. Yeah. You're starting to see a pattern here, guys, and we're sorry, but, the, This you know. band way overuses the quiet start. Oh, my God. It's like, is every right album the, like yeah, this? All the time. I'm like, fuck, did I just start listening to Unhallowed again? I know. It's like, oh, cool. Oh, oh cool. Uh, oh, it, oh, cool. Oh, okay. Hey, what's on the next one? Now, I do have to say that whenever I was listening to this band, I was playing Stardew Valley pretty much the whole time, so, like, I'm fucking harvesting potatoes to this shit. And, you uh, Russian. I was actually, it, it made me go into the into the mines and fight monsters because I was like, I got to be doing something more epic I need than to this. be killing enemies. We need to co-op that game. In that, well, yeah, in, that'd be fun. in that this regard, week. in that regard, though, I think it does, I think it does succeed. We'll use Ritual as an example. I think it's cool to listen to something like Ritual. Now, I will say with Ritual, they start adding a little bit more of that modern metalcore sound into it. I defended them earlier on saying that it was just straight metal, you start hearing that metalcore creep in. And I think it's good because it sounds a little bit different than what yeah, they're doing before. I made a special note of that. I'm like, wow, finally a little difference. I can I can audibly hear a difference in their sound. But it's not enough to stray to where their fans are like, what the fuck is this? They're done. They sold out. Well, whenever you get to Everblack in 2013... What I find interesting about that album is that it has more hooks. Yes. It's a little bit more hooky of an album. A gimmicky sound. I, I tend to remember the songs better. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the cover is exactly the same as Nocturnal's. Yeah, they don't deviate very much in their artwork, do they? I'd be curious to know who came up with the concepts on these. I just like I just like the way the album starts off with the kind of more of a doomier, slower yes. riff. And just kind of building up the intensity, whereas before they just start quiet and then just immediately blast. And so I remember thinking, this is going to be different. Largely, it wasn't. No, but there was but a little bit more harmoni har harmonies. <laughs> some harmonies. There was some <laughs> harmonies in there. Uh, I think, at least from me, from being a guitar guy standpoint, uh, the riffs, like you said, are a little bit more hooky. There's a little bit more uh, momentum in there. Um, yeah, I like I like these kind of slower riffs that they had on some of the start some of these songs and then come in and kick my ass. So it was a nice little change up, but again, it's not enough for the entire album for me to go, oh yeah, go ahead and bunch this in back to back to back with another album. Six albums in, I feel like I can finally point out that the Black Dahlia murder, for better or for worse, sounds like every project that one person on YouTube puts together. Look up a tutorial today of how to record metal guitars you'll find this sound. The guitars will sound like this, the drums will sound like this, the vocals will sound like this. I don't think in 2003 this band was trying to record a generic metal sound, but what the general masses started to copy was the Black Dahlia Murder style. So find that band on YouTube that you've never heard of before, or that one guy that's recording his eighth metal album. It'll sound like the Black Dahlia Murder circa 2013.
And that's not a bad thing at all. The, no, we're not saying that by any means. There's no variation. <clears throat> yes, that's the point we're trying to point out here. Big criticism is guitarists not coming up with their own sound or even engineers coming up with their own sound. Eventually, if you do something long enough, you will fall into patterns. You will fall into a process. Efficiency, I believe, is what that's called. But you eventually create your own sound that you lean towards in every situation. Most people that don't know what they're doing start by copying something that can be easily produced and systematically duplicated, if that makes sense. The thing about this band that blows my mind is that despite sounding so similar all the time, all the time, they have had no less than four drummers. Oh, we even forgot to mention three this. Three bass players and three lead guitarists. I forget about that. I'm with that. Uh, I can't believe we fucking glossed over that. Every album, they they switch out somebody. Somebody leaves the band, gets kicked out, and they have somebody else come in and takes over. Do you think it's one of those like, hey guys, I check this riff out. It's it's a little different. It's kind of hooky. I think people are gonna remember it and they're like, get, get out. out. <laughs> Just immediately get out of here. Leave These the, are the opposite songs. of Metallica. Play what I wrote down on the sheet or get out. I think every position this band has been revolving, except Not for the leagues. I was going to say, yeah. except for the vocalist. He's the only constant. So, yeah, it, it's Maybe interesting. Maybe he writes all the music. Maybe it's, he sits yeah, down with the guitar and writes it all. Yeah. Here, no, no, that note. I didn't write that note for you. It's entirely possible. It's just weird that you would swap out three lead guitarists without there being a noticeable change no, in the way the band sounds. No. So there's your formula, case in point. And they're good. I mean, they're not they're not just hired musicians. I mean, they played in other fucking bands before, so I can't believe we, we totally get this far and didn't even mention that. Yeah, because that blew my mind looking through the history. Like, Jesus, how many times are these guys swapping out drummers, guitarists, yeah. bass players? You wouldn't notice from listening to the albums. No, not at all, which, I, which made me totally and forget about it. And that leads me to believe that the principal songwriter is a metal elitist. I wasn't going to say that, but yeah, essentially that's probably the case. And then you get into Abysmal a few years later. Yeah, very aptly titled. Because by this point, dude, I was like, oh, fuck, here we go. Quiet intro and then blast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not a whole lot to really discuss on this. It's the same. Good, but... it's. I mean, the cover is red instead of blue. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of cool. That's a thing that exists. It's an interesting title. I love this band's t-shirts. They have pretty cool artwork on their t-shirts. Oh, so yeah. And I, w I would love to see them live because I think they'd put on a badass show. Oh, yeah. They'd be all over the place. It's kind of like what we were talking about, the Society's Finest discussion, where if we were at a show waiting for, like, Gojira to play or something, and the, and the Black Dahlia murder came on and we'd never heard of them before, we'd be like, holy shit. We'd be yeah. running to the merch booth we'd, to, get, we'd enjoy them. to get albums. And then we'd get them, and we'd probably really love it, but then we'd get another one, and we'd be all like, oh, oh, I get it. They just do the same thing. Well, let me check out the rest of their stuff. You'd probably get about three or four albums in, and they'd have you by the balls at that point. Yeah, you're just committed. But you're never gonna you're never going to feel the same way you did the first time you saw them live because they represent a sound that is unchanging, unvaried. And I think it's okay, but, I mean, we're... <laughs> We're in 2015. We started this journey 13 years before that. Yeah. And, or 12 years before that. I don't do math very good. But is that a testament, though, to their longevity, though? Testament. But they're still, sorry, I just wanted to throw that out there for you, Dan. I mean, well, they're clearly doing something right. I mean, they have quite they're doing, a following. They're doing everything I mean, they're, right. I mean, it's, it's all very technically sound music. It's not, I mean, it's not boring enough or it's not, you know, the same. I'm not going to turn it off. Well, I'm not going to turn it off if I'm listening to a metal playlist or a shuffle or well, something. Well, but I will if this is the sixth album in a row that I've listened to for them. Right. But if you if you mix it in with general metal. Yeah. No. Well, we, I said that earlier. It's something I would definitely put in my, my rotation. I just can't listen to back to back or two or three of these albums in a row. Or, you know, <laughs> or seven or eight. Seven, seven or eight of them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, but like, again, fuck. clearly, clearly they have the formula. They know what the fuck they're doing whoever's in the band at this point. Or they've taken a definitive stand, mm -hmm. and this is the sound of the band. This is the hill they're going to die on. You know, well, their fans know, like, they're, they're this is it. They're not going to sound any different. This is, you know, this is who we are. We are who we thought they were. We've been conditioned as metal fans to expect disappointment on the next album. Black Dahlia Murder is kind of the opposite. No, no, you're going to get exactly what you're expecting when you buy this album. 
Until 2017, Nightbring. I'm just kidding. It sounds just like the other <laughs> I was going to say, psych. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was the same. It's a good album, but. This is not where I go on a 15-minute tirade about how they fucked up after doing the same thing for seven End albums. And the band. It was a concept album. Yeah. I, honestly, I couldn't tell if any of these were concept albums. I found the, I found the lyrics, honestly, to be mostly drivel. Well, uh, like, uh, just like, you know. Is that a real word? Using really big words to describe how she was a bitch and deserves to die. You know, like... Well, there's only so many ways you can call someone a bitch, Dan. Cannibal Corpse does it better. Uh, I think that Nightbringers is, to quote Joe almost exactly, it's the next album by the Black Dahlia Murder. I have spoken. And then an album after that, it's the next album from Black Dahlia Murder. Right, so when a new one drops in 2019 or 2020, it's going to sound just like Nightbringers. Because it sounded just like Abysmal. Because it sounded like Ever Black, which sounded like Ritual, and going on and on and on, back to Unhallowed. So to you fans out there who love this band and wanted us to cover them, good band. I would definitely recommend them. If you want to add some good, heavy technical sound into your rotation, I just can't stomach more than two or three albums in a row. But I loved having them in a rotation, and I loved that would listen to them. For sure. Would that be your final thought, Josh? Definitely my final thought. I ref- I recommend them. I just don't suggest listening to uh, to the whole thing or to all of them in a row. Mix them in. Damn, what about you? You guys like Jack in the Box tacos, right? I love yeah. Jack in the Box tacos. And why do you like them? Because you sure know what thing. you're going to get every fucking time. It's a sure thing. It's a greasy, crunchy, spicy taco. Have you ever gone into a Jack, Jack in the Box tacos with some expectation of them being amazing? No, you don't, because you know that they're not. But damn it, they're delicious. But you're still going to keep getting them because they're cheap. There's plenty of them. You're never going to run out. That's the Black Dahlia murder as far as metal. They're, they're the Jack in the Box tacos of metal. And I'm fine with that because they're going to continue to do well. They're going to continue to make sales. And they're going to continue to impress because because you, you just you know what you're going to get. I like tacos. And, yeah, I, I think this band is up my alley in the sense that I'll listen to an album every now and again. But, you know, honestly, I'm probably just going to buy Unhallowed on vinyl, and that's going to be it. I don't think I can say anything that has not already been said by Dan and Josh. The Black Dahlia Murder is a sure thing in metal. I'm going to use a different food analogy to try and be original since Dan decided to go for the Jack in the Box tacos in this one. Well, it's not it's not sure going to top it. It's You're not sure going to top it. Do you like White Castle? I thought he was going to go Burger King tacos. I really oh, did. Burger King tacos. <laughs> Do I you like, like Burger King tacos? Because they suck. <laughs> I like the Burger King tacos. Nah. I'm, nah I'm they ch- don't taste like Jack in the Box I'm tacos. I'm conditioned to like Jack in the Box too much. They're like the. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy them for what they are. Like the Black Dolly murders, like the Jack in the Box tacos, and like Mortification is the is the Burger King tacos. Sorry, Joe, we totally derailed you. The Black Dolly murder, it's a sure thing. Damn, what's your album of the week? My album of the week is abysmal, but no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've actually gone back and been listening to a lot of Anagata De Vita by Iron Butterfly because I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. Patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. Josh, what about you? I have been more of an, a grunge phase recently, and mine is Incesticide from Nirvana. Oh, I was going to say, we already did the Alice in Chains episode. No, no, no. I, I've been listening. I've been going back and listening to a lot of old Nirvana. I love Incesticide. Mom and Dad went to yeah, a show. Yeah, yeah. That's a good uh, one. Yeah. Yep. My album of the week was not Guano Apes until I listened to Roach Coach. They tore that thing apart. So for me, it's Planet of the Apes by Guano Apes. It's their greatest hits. It's got all the songs that they write that everybody likes and wants to hear them play live. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Matt Nas for saying that the Dead Z rendition of Tom Sawyer is not the best rendition of Tom Sawyer. We both know what the best rendition is, don't we, Matt? Yeah, the Rush version. It's exceptionally faster and frantic. And the it, Rush version. It's by a band with Jesus on the cover. It's garbage. Neil fucking Pert. Speaking of Neil Peart, we got a comment on episode 29, the Chad Kent interview. No more Mr. Nice Guy says, Chad's okay. Still prefer Neil Peart. Neil fucking Peart. All I have to say is, no one is saying that he is not the man. What I am saying is that Chad Kent is the greatest fucking drummer in the world. Liar! You lie! 
And if you guys want to talk to us, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can reach out to us on our Discord server. There's a link in our show notes. If you click on it, you can go and talk to us on Discord. You can also join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash discography discussion. You can join our official Facebook group where we have memes for days. You can also tweet at us at Discuss Metal, or you can tweet at me personally at Discuss Metal Dan or at Joe at Discuss Metal Joe. I think Josh showed up on Twitter a couple days ago, so I am in. We'll have him on. Uh, we'll have him on soon enough. You can also send us an old-fashioned email at show at gmail.com. Reach out to us about anything. Ask us about the show. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Recommend bands. A lot of the bands we talk about have been recommended by you guys, the listeners, and it's always fun, especially if I've never heard them before. It can always be kind of a surprise for me. And on that note, this has been episode 129 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things Discography Discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. If you are not a patron, you can become one at patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. We have some sweet perks. Beer, good. Music. Memes mm. for days. Money, good. Joe put me on the spot. I didn't know where I was going with that one for a minute. I just yell random <laughs> shit at the microphone. It's fine. Ah, pickles. Use that on an episode, too.